Hi there, and welcome to episode 17 of the A-Strings podcast. We are joined today by our very special guest. I had a big joke about how we got our biggest fan in the room, and but we've turned it off because of um, ambient noise. So, so yeah, just carry on. <laughs> we got the most huggable customer in the room. We and we, he's the only customer that's got a jingle. Yes. So, should we hear the jingle? Yeah. <laughs> and that's where we put the jingle. Yeah. It's a lot less magic when you're hearing it. Yeah. Nice to have you, Elwin. I feel honoured to well, be invited into the inner sanctum. Especially after you, especially after you were fired after episode 10. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I was dumped, yeah. but now it's a, it's a sort of a glitter in return. Yeah. I've even had to learn the A-string special handshake to come into the inner sanctum. <laughs> and Adam's made an effort. He's yeah. wearing, um, uh, wearing uh, my, his uh, blouse. My, my he can nice. be described as... Uh, basically a, well, camp, a camp cow I think yeah I, I, it's, it's a, it's got a, the, yeah. it has got a bit of zebra to it as well yeah, yeah. Something. It, was it linen but, <laughs> I don't know it's nice though it looks flammable I, do you know what I did wear a vest under it today because I thought it was going to be a bit cold and it's turned out the opposite But so I'm suffering today yeah so he's about three or four buttons undone gotta be <laughs> D- David Coverdale would be all over that yeah what all over my chest <laughs> <laughs> this is the this news, is the news. As we're recording now, we're three days away from the Big Black Star event we've gone on about recently, the Jared James Nichols evening. This is the point now where I feel like the pressure building now. Yeah? Yeah. I start to feel a bit like, is it, go get this ready, go get this ready, go get this ready. Mm. But um, I'm sure it's going to be good. Have you, you've spoken to the guys at Black Star? Yeah. Already? So um, on Friday, the new Jared James Nichols sing tramp landed in the UK. Yeah. There's only 50 being made or okay. something but they did kind of or maybe it's a hundred but they kind of backtracked and said that well there might be a second run and oh, okay. you know, so, but still you know it's a like a British racing green coloured yeah and it's a head and cab it's a 2 by 12 cab isn't it uh, it's, a, it's a lunchbox well it's not a lunchbox it's a smaller head yeah compact 2 by 12 vertical cab looks nice yeah 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 nice. absolutely it's very green so he so we got a couple of those coming in Yes. One of which he's going to use. I don't know whether to get him to physically sign both of them. I just as so. a because if you're going to buy it, you're going to appreciate the charity. I think so. I don't know anything about it. How different is it to like a standard HT? Is it 15 watt? Do you know what? I, I, it's the only one that I haven't sort of done the research on. Tom's here as well. It's just he's relegated over to the um, the other side of the studio because, or partially because. Elwin's taking um, a space around the table, but secondly, Tom Spurs, Elwin's Liverpool, yeah. and there's a big game coming up this weekend. And in the same way that, like the Cardiff City fans aren't allowed to go into the same entrances uh, that the Swansea okay. fans and everything. Although I, I did that... explain earlier that Spurs are actually my second team because when I was a school teacher many many zillions of years ago, I taught in a primary school in a place called Edmonton which is down the road from Spurs football ground. So I used to drive past the old White Hart Lane every morning on the way to work. So I had a bit of a soft spot for Spurs, but not when they play in Liverpool. The Jared James Nichols amp. Uh, it's on the HT20 RH There you go. Ah, there we go. So HT20 RH Mark II. Which right. is just the reverb head Mark II, isn't it? Yeah. You know, is his playing heavy on the distortion side of it, or is he a bit more of a... It's kind of... It reminds me of Gary Moore. Okay. Very, very, yeah. very, very kind of like shreddy blues. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's what it reminds me of. I call it heavy blues. Kind yeah, of, right. Yeah. Um, he's going to be arriving mid-afternoon. Okay. So we'll try and get him in here to have a bit of a chat with him. Yeah. As a bit of a, a feature. Yeah. Mm. Oh, for the podcast. For the next, for the podcast, next podcast. Yeah. Nice. That's news to me. That's good news. Yeah. That is, <laughs> When it's news to me, it's news to everyone. Is it five venues he's going to? Six, I think. He's starting Six. at Anderton's on Thursday. Just gone. Or, 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 or we're in. number two. Right, yeah, okay. we're number two of the run. Yeah. Right. So, um, the Amps only arrived in with Blackstar on Friday. So, 
obviously is bank holiday. So imagine, and I spoke to him this morning because I realised we haven't got any like ID cores, like tens or twenty. So yeah, I've ordered a few more of those, and uh, I don't think they've been shipped out yet. So they're cutting it a little bit fine because he's actually going to be using our amps. Okay, um, for the for yeah, the demo, so he's bringing one of his, which doesn't mean that they're X demo ours. then. Elwin, because <laughs> Elwin always likes to try and get it. Well, yeah. I thought that that PRS that Adam played the other day is now an X demo. <laughs> so, what's, so everything that comes through the video room, uh, absolutely. Is demo. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, me and Tom are going shopping tomorrow evening because we got to get a rider together. Tom is. I th- we've talked about maybe. Uh, introducing Tom to him as a local celebrity chef kind of thing and <laughs> trying to <laughs> right maybe what um, was it that Tom made for Biscuit News once he made a couple of things haven't he but chili. oh the chilli oh, yeah, yeah, bring, yeah, bring him some of those as your local celebrity chef well, yeah, yeah. Oh, so oh, no one hour like he'd be allergic to something so like, the likelihood is as well he's probably not getting a chance to eat properly anyway it's probably no. all services and everything else and, and not being funny but if he's asking for this I want to stand there and eat and watch it. I want to watch him eat it all. We're not, um, nothing's going to waste. You want to see him with Mark Holcomb and the stuffed olives? <laughs> yeah. just Swallow it. Eat the olives, Mark. They were especially for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's quite a humble rider. Yeah, and mine would be far more. Um, so here's a question because we, we were. We no showy, no moey. No shandon, no bandon. You heard of that? No, but yeah, it makes sense. I think that, yeah, I think we're going to have a good night. Yeah. He seems a pretty down-to-earth guy, though, because I've seen a couple of bits on YouTube and everything of him chatting and stuff really? in forums, and he's very, very easygoing, very good with the public, if you like. Mm. Yeah, you he know? seems to be, doesn't he? Mm. So, I was in Dublin on the weekend, and I went to a couple of music shops. Oh, really? Mm. Any of uh, Sean's territory? Yeah, yeah. So Sean yep. is our fender rep for those who don't remember. So um, went to I think the there's a chain of shops in Ireland called Music Maker, right? And I went into the Dublin one, which was their kind of um, flagship store. Mm-hmm. Really, really lovely staff. You know, I had a bit of a chat with them, and you know, because they kind of approach you as you walk in. Uh, you know, can we help you? All that kind of thing. And um, so you walk in. It was on three floors. You walked into the wow. level and. It was kind of keyboard stock and strings and all that kind of thing. The really nice thing that I liked is that you didn't have a till counter. It was podiums. So, you know, if you're talking to some, if you're talking to a customer and a lot of the time customers do look over the screen, don't they, to try and see what you're looking at on the thing. Elwin does. So, yeah, you're trying to find out <laughs> cost price. I've already yeah, done yeah. research, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, the it was two podiums. Okay. So, um, the, the discipline with that, that we, I really try to kind of drill in the ears that somebody always, always, always has to be kind of on the shop on floor the shop because, floor. you know, people could just, you know, wander over to the strings and they could, you know, pick yeah, them yeah. up off the thing, yeah. which I really liked the, the way it was laid out was beautiful. You know, there was, mm. um, I'll get to the guitar department in a bit, you know, because the, the interesting thing was that there was some things that they did really, really well. And then there were things that we did loads better as well, which oh, cool. kind of made me feel a little bit better about, about this place at the moment, <laughs> about you <Yeah>. guys. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, come on. I bet they didn't um, give you a cup of coffee. They didn't offer a cup of coffee. No, it, was, it wasn't even insinuated, no. But the... <laughs> so, um, you walk in and you've got the the floor and you've got quite a few cold keyboards, all RRP. Um, Good. I go in from what Sean um, says, Ireland really, really suffers from Tommen. Because I yeah. think, is it over £100 and you get free shipping, or 150 quid and you get free shipping with Tommen? 150 likely. euros, mark, rather. Yeah, likely. So, you know, with it being euros, and the UK is a little bit immune to that, or they... <laughs> Maybe it means the wrong word, but because we got to do the Euro um, uh, the conversion, conversion um, it does feel like again from another a different country. Whereas um, obviously they're dealing in euros, they're seeing um, what they can get. So I know um, they do suffer from 
people buying from Bax and Tom and, you know, quite um, raggedy. But, um, yeah, the, it was um, fairly busy. Went up to the guitar department and knowing that they, you know, they are a, a Fender account, um, you know, I think we've probably got about three times more Fenders than they have at the moment. They did. Flip an egg and that's yeah, for we're, us. we're down at yeah. the moment, I think. But, you know, he's. I was looking and he said, we're kind of down on the, the guitar side of things at the moment. Um, we haven't got that much in. And I was, we started the conversation how difficult it is. Um, and it's exactly the reason why they haven't got much up there is because they can't compete with mm-hmm. with others. But um, I just found out that um, they've taken on distribution for Blackstar for Ireland. So oh, okay. I think they've got a few shops. So when they say they've taken on distribution, I think that basically what they've managed to do is guarantee the... Um, you know, the brand just so in a similar stores. way that we do Optima yeah I guess kind so of thing. Yeah, so yeah they're like exclusive dealers and then they can sell out to other I, I guess that's what it is you know yeah, um, yeah. so um, yeah uh, they had loads of tailors and it was a really impressive tailor department as well so um, from what I gather if you bind a tailor to a, a certain um, level they will come in and they will just transform their area to yeah. just this beautiful looking thing with all the right bits of kind of paperwork and kind of specs and pictures next to the right guitars and it was impressive mm. really impressive they did the kind of entry level martin stuff okay and you know because of the commitment with that they had a bit of that there's about 15 20 of those did some sigma only a couple of fender acoustics yeah. um but they said that they were um, getting ready to start dealing with Gibson. Oh, okay. And, uh, so I said, right, so um, what's changed with them, you know, uh, with regards to how they um, deal with people? And he thought I meant, you know, he, he started saying, well, they've just been, they've been taken over or they've been, they went into bankruptcy and they've yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. changed the way of doing things. I wanted to know a bit more kind of technical, kind of um, technically how different it is to deal with them you know uh, on a business level but he, this guy didn't seem to know mm. what that was but what's interesting is people decided to take on gibson because they have been you know they, you know avoid at all cost kind of company for quite a while the new range is getting an awful lot of press and a lot of good press it yeah. seems to be but they seem yeah. to then be dumping the original 2019 yeah. Stock. <laughs> well, and that's the danger when it comes to this time of year is that, you know, traditionally, because you've had the new 2019, 2020 ranges, you know, announced run about June, July ish, is it? Yeah. 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 Come this time of year, all Gibson dealers get twitchy bums and they just dump yeah. the stock. Uh, especially they? when they, Amazon came on the scene. Yeah. You know, when when it was Gibson Direct on Amazon and then they were trying to shift off their stuff. Yeah. Amazon and then it hit no, the, they, they, It's not now. I, I, finishes, is, it? is it? I don't know. I, they, sure. they just don't seem to be yeah. not as, as prevalent. But now. I mean, obviously this is going to have a bit more longevity <coughs> in a sense that it's not year dated, is it anymore? It's oh, sort of classic that, and standard or something. They're so not they're, actually doing it by year. Right. Oh, that's really good. Which is a good idea. Yeah. You know, just, you know, develop a, a range as opposed to discontinuing yeah. and that's it. What and, doing, I think, yeah, so. that's that's really good. It's really good. You know, the proof's in the pudding. If if retailers can get as much out of it as the end users will, um, you know, they should do well. Yeah. I, kind I, of play, fo- I played a Gibson the other day though, and I prefer my Gretsch I bought from you. Really? Really? <laughs> yeah. Um, which um, I played one in guitar guitar in Birmingham, and I played a standard <sighs> Les Paul. I know. I know. I was up there just on business, mm. you know, as I am now and again. Did they offer you tea? <laughs> no. I wasn't in there long. <laughs> but no, you know, I mean, it, I, I much prefer that Gretsch I bought from here, which is a similar style. I'm absolutely... You know, weight, you name it, but it played much better than a two and a half grand Gibson. I'm enamoured with those uh, single cut weight Gretsches. I, yeah. Yeah. In... In time, and now is absolutely not the time. I need, <laughs> I need to, um, I need to get hold of one. Those green ones still there. So, listen, are you going to get the new meteoras? In? Yeah, we've the actually twin humbucker meteoras. Yeah, we've actually got some on order, but we prioritise something else first. We got a few Jackson bits coming in first, so I think they're going to be with us. What we know, a couple of weeks. Yeah, nice. Yeah, 
Because we've got I, our Scotty and Jackson coming in. And we that's have what I've kind of pushed up. Yeah, the, um, I, I'm hoping to be a bit more impressed. I mean, I, there's, um, Leighton's had some um, trickle through, I think. Yeah, I saw a picture. And yeah. I didn't like the look of it that much. And I really like the Meteora look. Did you see there's a little switch on him? Yeah. Yeah, was, that's interesting. I wonder what that is. Hmm. It's a coil split. It is a split, think, is it? Yeah. Or Good. a tap one or the other. It's interesting that it's a like, yeah. little push-push switch yeah. rather than a... Mm. Yeah. Push pull pop. But yeah, we got them coming in. Nice. And um yeah, I've already had a few inquiries on them. Mm. Um if I was playing in anything, that mm. that'd hundred percent be what you go for. Something I'd go yeah. for. Yeah. yeah. But I ain't. <laughs> Tell you what I I was interested looking at the other day was the um the music man uh, who's the lady? Oh, um, oh St. Vincent. St. Vincent. Vincent. Yeah, yeah they're talking cool. of wacky Saint shaped Vincent. guitars and things. St. Vincent. St. Vincent. Yeah. Yeah, they're really cool. Yeah. And so, it's, yeah. it's something completely different, and that's what a signature guitar yeah. should be, I think. Yeah. 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 So, in terms of segues, that was absolutely sublime, talking about signature guitars, because Elwyn has picked up Ooh. the Gilmore <laughs> Christie's nice. auction for all of his guitars and his collection. There's some amps in there. And it brought did, it with him. It wasn't a straightforward process to buy this either, was it? You no, you to had to actually this? go on Christie's um, website and register for the auction. Wow. Um, and then and pay for the catalogue and everything. So what are and you then, going for? Hey, what, what am going I going for? for? <laughs> well, I was thinking of selling the house and <laughs> bidding for the black strat, but yeah. I think, still think the house wouldn't even no. be that. <laughs> then out of, out of, you know, in fairness, there are a few items in there that are I noticed four or five hundred pounds. There's like... Um, and a couple of guitars that are like a grand, two grand, three grand. Some very kind of um, period popular kind of um, pieces like... Um, yeah, you know, what's, what's it's that, like, you know that, that's a, just a, a 2007 Strat, 2000 to 3000 pound, you know? Which, you know, still, you know, looking at that... 2005 so, one, 1000 to 1500 and... It, that's a so single ply there, so that would be a 50 yeah. spec. So it, all of these things, I imagine, would be... Things like this would be sent yeah, to him saying... It's a 57. Yeah. There you go. So they'd probably say, play, right, this, um, play this. this, and what would you change about this for your... So this history with it, you know, as part of the development of the... Um, Real things. I noticed there's a um, a twelve string ovation there, which is what um, uh, they use in Queen for all the acoustic stuff. Oh yeah, which you can't get for love and the money now. And the the kind of guide price on here is between a grand and fifteen hundred quid. I know loads of people who actually kind of buy one from Reverb for not far off that. I yeah, think. you know it's yeah. um. Yeah. yeah, there's a 1987 really nice pink strap with lace sensors in. Yeah, that's like yeah. 1500 to 2400 is the yeah, you know, suggested price. But having said that, they got the black strap listed at 150 to 200 grand. Yeah, well, it's going to make ten times that. So. Yeah, look, I was going to say um, that was using the smoke in the water video, the headstockless Steinberger. Um, yeah, you know, he's used a fair different range of gear yeah. over the years, and you know, he's. He's closer to the end of his career than he is the, you know, the start of it. You know, I'm, I'm imagine there's something like the, um, you know, the custom shop stuff that he gets sent through. Yeah, are gonna, yeah, I think be the sufficient other, for anything that he wants. I think at the back um, next to the black strap, there's, I think there's a couple of custom shops there, aren't there? Yeah, there's so the there's kind of like they, yeah. were, they were prototypes of his of his black strap mm. signature that they sent him. And he's got like number one, number two, number three prototypes. Yeah. Plus the actual black strap. Yeah. And how much are the oh. prototypes going for? Oh God, they've got them down at like 20, 25 grand, something yeah, like that. Yeah, we can beat that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have one. The, um, <laughs> oh, just out of curiosity, there's a left-handed one there. Yeah. So obviously he's sent through to make sure that, you know, he's happy with it. But how much is that going for? Four to, Four to six. six. Do you know what? Uh, and that's dollars. So you convert that. It's an NOS. Yeah, you know, but that's not far off. What yeah, yeah, yeah. A lefty would. If anyone wants me to bid on their behalf, yeah. <laughs> so we'll have you in the week after with whatever you purchased oh, yeah, yeah. with this sleeping bag, yeah. <laughs> yeah. sleeping bag and guitar. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot to get through in biscuit news today. Uh, Come on then. So I think first off, we should thank the people that have contributed for last week uh, or for, through the week. Because Has there's been, just so much to right. get through. So, Mike Rossiter came in last week. Yeah. Brought us iced 
lattes, iced coffees, giant biscuits. Yeah. Uh, he brought us the granola flat, the granola squares as yeah, well. Yeah, they always good and well. Just amazing. Mm. And his plan is to make make us make, his, make his own uh, biscuits. And I don't know whether they're going to be giant as well, but uh, if they are, that's amazing. Mm. So thank you to Mike, Christina, one of our our new uh, new regulars. She came in to try. I, I, only following from Facebook, but she came in to try one of the gluten free. Custard creams, by the looks of it. <laughs> she was um, she was coerced into trying a, a gluten free custard cream. Um, she came in uh, just yeah, p- just to pop in, say hello, and and uh, and bring us this plethora of marshmallow goodness. So we had two boxes of tonics. tonics. Oh. We already had a ten box out there from mm-hmm. last week from the Herberts. So we had a 10 box out there already, plus these two boxes of six, plus two two boxes of six of these snowballs, the coconut snowballs. Brilliant. The good thing about these and the tonics is, because they're marshmallow, they're completely silent on a podcast. So you go crazy. You, you help your, yourself. You have your knees. Is that a challenge? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so we did coerce uh, Christina into eating a custard cream, a gluten-free custard cream, and uh, she wasn't And she's happy. not coming back. She's not coming back. <laughs> Brilliant. So but thank you to thank you everyone. and yeah. to Mike Roster. So we've got a, uh, a smorgasbord of biscuits. and Yours are more, yours are more exciting because yours are from overseas. Well, so they're for you. Tell us about your... your well, I went away and as is, as is polite, I brought some biscuits. Chris, I bought from the Guinness Museum, I got some luxury sea salt caramel fudge. Which oh, isn't yeah. technically a bis- They do them on the plane from China. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> good is that to us? Yeah. Do you know what? He doesn't listen. Tom's already hovering. <laughs> yeah. Um, and some shamrock shortbread. Amazing. Ooh. Shamrock shaped or shamrock shamrock, sh- or? shamrock shaped shortbread. Show you that seven times. <laughs> if they're shamrock um, tasting, it just tastes of grass. Yeah. It? <laughs> <laughs> We're back to vegan again. They're yeah. vegan. <laughs> and what have you got? So I was in... Cardiff today, mm. and there's no better place than oh. Wally's Delicatessen. And I know Andrew likes his cannoli, can, cannoli, yeah. or cannoli, 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 cannoli. So, <laughs> so I basically I bought an Italian biscotti selection because I knew Tom didn't like the cannolis. Tom took one look at this tray, and it's a tray full of loads of different things. You're like, yeah, I don't like them either. But luckily, I also bought. The Belgian boys, mini choco stroop waffles. No, I didn't realize. <laughs> no, I didn't realize that they were called the Belgian boys, <laughs> mini choco stroop waffles. Stroop waffle. Um, Sounds like so, a good boy band. And they're all um, <laughs> yeah, the, the mini choco stroop you know, waffles. Adam's got a dress ready for it. I am. Oh, yeah. hang on, I got a I got a shamrock shortbread. I do like shortbread. They good? Um, very nice. Some of the Scottish shortbread is better than the Irish, though. I think. But okay. I think I think that's to be expected. I don't think the Welsh ones are up to much cop either. <laughs> I promised myself this morning that I'm going to stay off the bad stuff because I've had a really, really pig out weekend. I've had oh, I have well. three portions of fish and chips Tom, over the course. Of- <laughs> He's loiter in there. Come on. Right, what do you want, Tom? I want some Guinness fudge. Oh, Tom wants some Guinness fudge. I'm going to try a sh- Is it just? It's just shortbread. Oh, Kate actually bought that last night on the ferry on the way back over. Oh, very hard. Yeah, so it's not as soft as Scottish shortbread. Can you just give me a corner? Do not. That's nicer than the Scottish stuff. See, I prefer the Scottish stuff. You? Yeah. Oh, that Guinness fudge is very Moorish. Is it? Mm. Can you taste the Guinness? Right. Not, Not overtly, but... My memory of Guinness is that I, when I tried it, I didn't like it. So do they taste like Guinness? Do it taste like Guinness? There's a, there's yes. a hint. Yeah. Yeah, there's a hint. Definitely. I can smell it from all of you lot. <laughs> Chowing down. Mm. Oh! So what's next? I need my sugar levels boosted. <laughs> I purposely didn't eat too much before I came, so my sugar right. levels would be quite low. You look like the man who'd enjoy a Belgian stroop waffle. Oh, mini, I mini would love a Belgian boy, stroop waffle. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, you know how to edit. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Biscuit! 
So, Elwin hasn't come empty-handed. He's brought in... I think. Did we mention before that Elwin has probably got the most comprehensive um, collection of delays, reverbs, and just mad effects that we know? Yeah, he is the man of ambiance, yeah. Mm. Yeah. You're going to be so disappointed then, because this is all tame stuff, this is. Is it? <laughs> so, so, what have you brought us... Um, it, it's, this is your top. Just a little bit of a mixture of a couple of things. I haven't hmm. brought anything that's too wild and wacky, because you know you want something that's at least musical. Is it fair to say that these are your favourites? Um, I would say that probably four of them hmm. out of this. Well, in fact, yeah. If I went in order of what I brought in, um, first up is the Boss Terror Echo. Right. Cool. Um, which I don't know how to describe that. It's a kind of a mixture of reverb and far out space noises. Um, the staple reverb really is the MXR reverb mm. that I got from you guys. Um, and two settings on that in particular, the, it's the epic and the pad settings. Right. There are very very spacious and uh, and far out yeah um i've brought in an old blood noise endeavors procession mm. reverb pedal which is not a normal reverb pedal because the tails have either flange uh filter or tremolo on them okay um, nice um so that makes some very interesting ambience. um and then from a delay point of view We've got uh, the Strymon El Capistan take delay, um, which has also got an option for a spring reverb as well that mm -hmm. you can bring in as an alt switch on it. Um, I've got the Catlin Bread Belly Pock Deluxe, which is uh, um, an EP3, yeah. effectively. With the preamp. With the well. preamp already kind of built in. Um, and then I have a Earthquake Devices Avalanche Run version 2. Now, my favourite thing about this selection is we've got a boss here, and we've got an Avalanche, and we've got an Earthquaker here. Indeed. Not that they do the same thing, but it's the two yeah. products that we talked about last week. But, I mean, out of all of them, that is my favourite pedal. The Avalanche Run V2 right. is yeah. awesome. It's amazing. It's an epic pedal. And just out of interest, what I've also done is, given that technology's moved on so much these days, I mean, most of these pedals are analogue, um, the Strymon is digital, um, but the rest of them are, are analogue. But what I have brought in is uh, my Line 6 HX Stomp. Right. Which is the squashed down version of the big Line 6 floorboard, uh, the Helix floorboard. Mm. Um, it's got everything in it that the Helix has got. The only differences are in the DSP with a number of blocks you can actually use at the same time and all the ins and outs. Obviously, you haven't got as many ins and outs as you have on the big floorboard and no expression mm. volume pedal. Um, but it works as an interface as well. Goes straight into computer by USB into your door. Mm. Um, and the reason I've kind of brought that in is just because I, I've just put one little patch together this afternoon that kind of stacks um, a a delay uh, and three reverbs, just so that you can yeah. see that you don't have to just have one reverb playing along. You know, you can stack things. You asked me once about. I think I, I think at one stage I was stacking like thirteen delays or something, <laughs> <laughs> and it sounded like I was on warp speed ten or, <laughs> or are you disappearing off into the wilderness somewhere. But uh, so Adam's going to pick up um, the guitar, and we're going to have a listen to each of the pedals that Ellen's brought through, and maybe you can talk us through yeah. how you use each one, and tell us why they're your pick. I guess it's interesting. We're starting with the Terror Echo. The boss um, Terror Echo, and um, I'll be ca careful how I say this because it might seem I'm being a little bit biased given our conversation last week. But it seems that every guitar shop has a number of boss pedals. That uh, the Slicer, for example, um, Terror Echo is one of them. I think that it's very very difficult to move on in a. A timely manner. Um, it's not. You know, the, it's not something that everybody would would like. Um, 
you can use it in many different ways. You can use it as a as a straight up reverb to an mm. extent, but I tend to use it more for the. Uh, so, if you like the percussive tail thing that comes on it, which you'll hear when Adam so, kind of plays a little bit. So, is it a reverb, a delay, or like a fusion of the two? It, I don't know. Is the honest answer to that okay. because it's not? I wouldn't call it a delay. Um, it's think, more of a reverb with some kind of fil- filtering. Yeah, sort of. Have a, have a listen to it. This is with everything at twelve o'clock. So this is. Uh, the American performer strapped into a Black Star Studio 10 6L6 SM57. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, wow. So that's with everything at 12. on it the main controls feedback and spread and the feedback is the number of times obviously as it would be with a delay and the spread is is how long it carries on for in a way but yeah if you max everything on it mm. i'll do a stab again yeah is it the self-oscillation <laughs> you wanted weird you've got weird yeah. I don't know what that's done to the recording levels but <laughs> <laughs> I'll figure it out <laughs> but as a less extreme I was going to say take it down something quite subtle that you know something you know, what would be the most usable kind of patch you know as a yeah usable <laughs> <laughs> there you go It's almost like getting to slap back. Yeah. So what was that one you just in there? Was that's the feedback? Feedback. That's okay. The spread. The spread does that. Ah, okay. The feedback. It's almost like it kind of it reverbs off everywhere, bounces everywhere, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it kind of gets turns itself inside out, kind of thing. Yeah. So what so we got now? Here? We have the old blood noise procession reverb, which um, at the moment is set on the flange tail. So this has two foot switches on this. Yeah, one is a hold function, okay. so you can make it infinite. So if you keep your foot on that, it goes on, you can play over it. Oh, wow. And then when you release, it fades away. So it's digital? Digital controlled. It's an analog unit, but it's got digital controls in it. Okay. So it's a mixture of both. Yeah. That's the flange you can hear, obviously. But again, these are all creating just ambient pads and... And what Adam's playing here, that is that yeah, the kind of thing the kind that you're of doing, stuff, this yeah. nice kind of clean... Um, yeah, um, it's always on a clean amp. Yeah. It's never... I'm usually using my JC22. Right, okay. Which is stereo, so, so I'm using all of these in stereo So you'll well. go stereo in yeah. and... Right, okay. Yeah. yeah. But then, if you go to the filter setting, we have a different... Mm. Different tail. Kind of reminiscent to what the boss was doing, wasn't it? That kind of like yeah, open yeah, without the ball, 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 ball. yeah, but <laughs> without the ball, I do that again. Ball, ball, ball. <laughs> <laughs> but again, if you put the with some things on. like yeah, so you can hear the um, the phaser going on quite a bit, or the flange going on. In the background, this there. is the filter on this one. So right? when the hold is on, the signal I'm playing, yeah, the is signal dry, you're playing then, is, is dry, yeah. and it's just the effect that's underneath. So, uh, so are you able to click it once and it just hold that, or have you got no, a key foot in there? What you can do is the actual um, reverb button. Mm. If you take that beyond about three o'clock, mm. it automatically goes into sit in there forever. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
So that's just infinite now. That'll go like that forever. Mm. But you can still play over it. Yeah. So whatever you've done there, it sits under. Once it goes beyond three o'clock, it'll just sit there. You can still... And your signal's wet, which is great. Yeah. And you can play with the other buttons while it's doing that, so it's still mm. going. Yeah, it's a pad, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. But he'll just sit there all day. Then the last one is the tremolo one, which... And does it speed up automatically? You have to use the speed button. There is a speed button on it. Right. So it's not like a swell. So now you've got that underneath. There's a infinite going on, going on, going on. So this is the MXR reverb. This is the MXR reverb. And at What's the moment segment? it's on plate with everything on 12 o'clock. So most of these are just straight up usable reverbs that you use in every day. So if you start increasing the decay, blend, getting into much bigger plate territory, and then the tone button obviously does what it says, it either darkens or brightens the reverb. And if we move on to spring, you get more into uh, slapback territory. And it is quite drippy as well if you if you just move the strings and give it a you can hear it. But one of my favourites on here because I'm going to skip some of them Yes, yeah, fine. is uh the epic setting. Epic. Where you start to get a much longer tail. Or trail tail. So when you volume swell in, the tail is still here underneath it when he's volume swelling in. Most traditional of all the reverb so far, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we've had the the plate and the spring. This is the epic setting, which is a plate, but it's a plate with modulation. And then, if you go to Adam's favourite setting, which is the pad setting. <laughs> The first one you had was the room, sorry, this is the pad. So that's the choir of angels in the background. Which you can darken. So if you take the tone right back, that's darkening it, obviously. If you bring it up the other way, you know your music room. Do you have incense going on? Uh, maybe a glitter ball? I do have a wizard's hat in the corner. 
<laughs> but that's unrelated. Looks a bit like, <laughs> looks a bit like the sword in hat from Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Some joss sticks going. But it's a very uh, lava lamp. Very angelic sound, isn't it? Yeah. So what's this one now? So now we have the Strymon El Capistan. Oh. D tape, digital tape machine. Um, multi options with this. At the moment, it's on. Um, fixed head mode uh, A which is a very sort of slapbacky but again this is so versatile in the sense you have the tap tempo okay nice but with this you can alter the tape age, the wow and flutter, you can do the tape bias, you can do the tape crinkle. Yeah. You can really, it, it models a tape machine, basically, when you play around with it. How long does it delay? Different head options. It depends. The The fixed head, I think, goes up to about 300 milliseconds. Um, when you go into some of the multi-heads, it'll go up to three, four seconds. Right, wow. Whatever, so... <laughs> this is a long delay now then for you. What you can do as well is put a spring reverb in with it. Mm. Now you've got a spring reverb as well. Because if you hold the tap switch down and turn the time, it becomes a reverb. Oh, okay. And similarly with the others, that becomes tape crinkle, that becomes tape bias, and so on. So you can really play around. But it also does, um, on the single head option, there's a sound on sound on it. So if you play something now, just, just play a chord or something or whatever, now keep on playing, and that chord should stay in the background. You can just hear it underneath. It fades away slowly. Yeah. So it will do like a sound on sound as well. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, just as versatile. Mm -hmm. Tape delay is my favourite out of all the delays. Because and of that kind of t decay and yeah, yeah, dark. Yeah, the dark repeats. I agree with yeah. that. And everything and yeah. that. Just play a minute before I run, you know. do with this first of all i'll take the delay out altogether okay and you can just have the reverb in here nice so this is just a plate reverb and sorry um, what pedal is this this is the sorry it's the earthquaker devices avalanche run oh, okay. version two so it's a true stereo pedal mm -hmm. and it sounds absolutely amazing in stereo and when you control it with expression pedal as well you can control any one of these buttons mm -hmm. with the expression pedal you plug an expression pedal in choose which button on this dial that oh, you want wow. to control, and it'll control any one of the dials. And we've Brilliant. got on the... The reverb is quite basic. It's a decay and a mix. So if Adam, if Adam plays it, I mean, decay's at 12, mix at 12, you've just got a just a simple plate. If you take the delay right there, this decay right up, you start getting some incomplete. But again, this also has hold function oh sorry it's the tap button to hold on this one so if you play that will now should just sit but the original chord he played is underneath then if you start bringing the delay in Is that 
something like a distortion to it. It can do all sorts. You can get a bit crusher out of it. Ah, there we go. It's the reverse delay. The reverse delay goes into a bit crusher. I forgot to say this has three types of delay. It's got a normal delay, mm. which is the first one it was on. Then you have a reverse delay, which I'm bringing in now. sleep <laughs> but you can also do tap divisions with the delay as well so you start doing different tap divisions and everything so. it's a bit like one of those Paul a, a bit like one of those Paul McKenna um, yeah. CDs you are going to sleep yeah do not drive heavy machinery when <laughs> but then there's a swell put that cigarette down. auto <laughs> swell decay which you can it'll do volume swells for you effectively by playing the string. We gotta have a bit of fun. This can go 100% wet on the decay, on the delay and the reverb. They'll both go fully wet. It's kind of... It's like when you reach that part of the dream when you realise something's not quite right. Hang on. I'm wearing a blouse. <laughs> Where did this go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Adam's appropriately dressed for all of this. Really, yeah. isn't he? It's like chaos, isn't it? This, yeah. Uh, I like that a lot. But this is kind of what you're looking to get in, isn't it? The EQD mm. stuff, and it's all great. Mm. I've got the Grand Orbiter as well, which is a phaser pedal, and that's really good. Is it? So here we go. This should be on already. A delve into digital. A delve into HX Stomp Digital. I'm not doing any tweaking with this. This is just as it is. So... That's the plate reverb turned off and the delay turned off. So you've just got an octave reverb and a particle reverb on at the moment. So now that you've all fallen asleep and whatever. The fantastic thing with um, that, that you do, which um, I know some, uh, quite a few other people do, is that you're not afraid to chop and change. You know, like you'll put no. something in to buy to buy something else and you've, you've had a lot. 
a the lot has thing, passed through your hands. Yeah, the one thing I did recently was obviously buy the mini log, the Korg mini log synth. Mm. And these pedals can, well, the synth can actually go through the pedals. Really? And that's incredible, some yeah. of the sounds you can make with that. Yeah. Especially when you get the arpeggiator going on the Korg and you put it through. I mean, we didn't even do the, the, the bell epoch. Yeah. You know, but you stick it through something like that and yeah. it sounds great with the synth. Absolutely, and you can let so, the synth do what it wants, yeah. and you can be you can be twiddling, twiddling the, yeah. You can set the synth on arpeggiate, slowish arpeggiate if you want, whatever, and then just twiddle with buttons. Yeah, and get all sorts of uh, sounds coming out. And that's exactly why Helvin's got his own signature jingle. <laughs> Q. <laughs> <laughs> So, usually we do a Tom's Top 5. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see what uh, our Elwyn rates the pedals that we, uh, yeah. that so, we talked about. Could you rate them? Say where you are, Tom. No need. I Bye. would rate them number five. Not just the ones you got here, but uh, the oh. ones that you've... Oh, God. Um, Jesus. The best... Sorry, I'm chewing a mouthful of this. He's caught me at an opportune moment. <laughs> at, least stuffing, you, at least you apologise. <laughs> yeah. just nice. Stuffing my face. I just crunched on a nut as well on something. <laughs> <laughs> or a fizzy that I a fill in. <laughs> 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 I sent you the dental bill later. <laughs> um, probably the best delay pedal I owned was the Empress Echo system. Right, right. Which was absolutely stunningly awesome. But I found I spent more time fiddling with it than I did actually playing. Because yeah. there were so many choices you had yeah. with it that I would just sit there for hours just trying all the different sounds and never actually playing anything, you know? Mm -hmm. um, which is what I like about things like the Avalanche Run and that it's one delay and it's one reverb, but and you can do a lot well. with that yeah. one delay and reverb. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you're only fiddling with a couple of buttons on those settings. You're not messing around with, mm. you know? Uh, the Strymon, the, the Al Capistan is great. It's a really, really awesome pedal. Mm. Better than the Timeline. Right. And, and the, again, is it the Blue Sky is the other one? <coughs> so the Blue Sky is the reverb, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, the Blue Sky the is the smaller sky, reverb. The Big Sky is the big reverb. Um, I've not really had any of the multi-reverb, big multi-reverb pedals. I do have an EHX Oceans 11, mm. which is a recent one they brought out, mm -hmm. which has obviously by name got 11 yeah. reverbs on it. Um, most of those are pretty good. Some of them are not as great. Have you uh, had the RV500? No. No, it's the DD500. No, I've got the RV6. Mm. Um, the RV500, I think um, quite a few of the stuff, the, the bits on that are in the Katana. Right, okay. Um, some of the reverbs they use in the RV500. And they're certainly in the GT1000 that you've mm. got because they've taken the delays, reverbs and mods from those three oh, from pedals. From the 500s, yeah. And put them in there. Um, yeah, and like the latest toy is the HX Stomp, really, which is mm. pretty cool because, as I said, it's just it's good for recording and everything because you don't need an interface. Mm. Um, you can go straight by USB, and it recognizes every door that's out there, just about. Because really? I mean, I use Mixcraft, which is not something that is common. Mm. Mm. You know, it's a PC based only. Um, and it should get more publicity, really, because it's a pretty good door. Yeah. And very simple to use. But it picks that up, no problem. Brilliant. Elvin's top five. Elvin's top five. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't really a top five. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom's just stormed out the room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Social media comment of the week. The last couple of weeks, we've been asking your opinions on um, what do we do when we come up with a situation like the the Roland the Boss um, thing that we got, whereby we really want to do the brand. And we think we can. Well, we've proven we can sell the brand, but um, we can't be competitive as people are online because you've got a lot of big boys. I've heard from three people in three separate conversations today that. There's going to be some casualties very, very soon. 
big ones as well. What, because of, because of this struggle with online pricing? And yeah, just, a, yeah, just a, losing money, be, hand yeah. over fist. Yeah, yeah, with yeah, the yeah. So, which we'll talk about in um, future episodes, I'm sure. But, um, yeah, this problem whereby if you want to be competitive with um, people online, which we want to do, we don't want to, we don't want to, well, we've gone through the reasons. So, um, we can't make any money from a boss pedal as it stands at the moment. Yeah. So, um, we put it out to you asking you to get in touch and um, tell us what you think. And we had a really quite long, detailed message from a guy called Hamid Kamil, uh, Kamali. And it's, yeah, it's really kind of a detailed, in depth thing. I'll kind of um, read a bit from it. It says, I just finished listening to episode 15, so here's my two cents. I used to work in a music shop in Cardiff many moons ago, so um have a little bit of insight into how things work, but I'm also sorry to hear how difficult things are now. I've never bought an expensive guitar without trying it first. I've actually bought the vast majority of my guitars from Anderson's, despite living in Cardiff. I've spent tens of thousands of pounds there, and the only times I've strayed have been when I bought my custom 24 and 1994 ESP MX220 from Gamlin's. The reason I'm saying this is because I value trying a guitar and finding the one over saving a few quid. I also value the experience of going into a shop. However, in order to be enticed into the store, I need to know I can try all the brands that I want, which is why I'll spend the extra money in travel to get to Anderton's. The reason I've never been to you is because you probably don't stock Gibson, ESP, and now no longer Boss. So that's right, we don't stock um, either of those brands. Um, I may not buy a Boss pedal, but I want to compare other pedals with it. Maybe the markup on Boss Pedal is crap, but if you sell a different pedal because the customer came in and could try both, you've actually made money from the Boss. I went to Anderton's in December looking for a single-cut guitar. I went there because they had a PRS and Gibson. I ended up leaving with a Les Paul R9. I didn't check Google to see if it was the best price. I wanted that one. There are always going to be numpties to buy a guitar without trying, for them, without trying them. Tom and PMT is perfect for that. However, for everyone else, you guys could be the store to go to but you can't alienate yourself by closing doors to certain brands. You can't just look at the markup of an individual item, but the markup of all the items averaged out, if that makes sense. I would, suge- I would suggest stocking Gibson, as there isn't currently anywhere decent in the UK which, uh, which has ESP USA. If you stock those, you will get people in. Get them in, and I will buy one. So, um, that's quite detailed, and, and it... it it's exactly the other flip side of the coin that we kind of think of. And yeah, what's good about reading something like that is that sometimes you get so caught up in, in our own kind of world, which is on the other side, of the, on, behind the counter kind of thing, that um, you wonder whether you overthink things and whether people actually think along these lines. So yeah. um, what are your kind of thoughts on that? My... Honestly. One, does he know Drew? Uh, <laughs> who is the current ESP rep? Do you know Drew? Uh, no, I'm joking. Um, the my, my issue is, yes, it's the kind of thing of, I've said to a couple of people recently in the last couple of weeks, if we had Gibson here, that's the main, mm. that's, we've got everything, really. Yeah. You know, all the sort of, you know, Fender, Gretsch, Jackson, well, Gibson, but PRS. But never in a million years at this present time would we ever even consider it based mm-hmm. on, like we said about earlier earlier in this episode, same with Boss. I just think it'd be brilliant to have them. Yeah, Elwin's the perfect guy to have here, actually, because he buys more pedals than I've ever, ever known anyone ever. But I wouldn't go into, uh, this is just me personally, but I wouldn't go into a shop and say, I want to try this pedal against a Boss pedal of, of a similar likeness. The, uh, in actual, you are the perfect person to ask because we, you are, one of the, if not the most kind of um, prolific, yeah, customers, you know, that we um, have coming through the door. So, um, but what will happen is you'll try something and you're aware of what the price is online. Yeah. And there'll be a conversation at the till Mm. and we can either, we can either compete or we can't. And, you know, we've said before, I'm sure, you know, we've had the conversation many times whereby I've said to you, Elwin, you can save a considerable amount buying online. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. feel that we can... Um, I mean, from my from my perspective, I think that, A, you've always been upfront 
about pricing and things and not mm. tried the bullshit mm. and stuff. I mean, from my perspective, obviously I'm trying to get a deal on things, but I also appreciate the fact that you guys need to be here as well. Otherwise I got nowhere to come to buy anything, mm. you know? So my view on it has always been, as long as I feel I'm getting a fair deal, I'm happy. Mm. As long as I feel I'm not being ripped off in any way and that, and I would much rather come somewhere where I feel comfortable and I feel that I can walk around and try what I want and not feel intimidated in any way or pressured. So, um, as a <clears throat> specific example, you need a new tuner, a TU3, right? Would you buy a TU3 from us at £65 or would you think, do you know what, I need a tuner but I can get it delivered to my door and I I may as well get it for 50 quid from I'd, wherever I'd else. I'd probably come in and have a conversation and if you could do it for 60 I'd say, right, I'll buy yours instead, kind yeah. of. You know, yeah. I'm not that. No, at that level, it doesn't make as much difference. No, if, if I was buying a, okay. a five thousand pound guitar, yeah. and someone else was selling it for four thousand, mm. that might tempt me. But but, uh, but something like a GT one thousand, which yeah. you know we're a mile away from where yeah you're it about is a hundred and forty pound dearer. Yeah, yeah, which is basically the you know yeah, what the, the profit yeah. margin was in it. You know, yeah. it, it it's um uh. What yeah. we can't, yeah. What so, so with something like that, that that's I, quite a big gap. It is from that point of view. But I would be, I would be okay if it came down half. Like, yeah, you know. Mm. Yeah, but and, my only concern is, and again, we are talking from our side of the coin, which is only one side. My concern is putting the amount of money that. A co- that kind of that that company wants yeah, yeah. in with them just to be a showroom for something yeah. mm. that one people can get cheaper online and two if they are comparing it the other thing is going to be better anyway mm. because yeah. we know it's going to be better anyway that's mm. why there's still a DS one in the yeah. cupboard but I mean mm. not everyone has yeah. the same view that I do people might just no. be out for the cheapest thing they can get and they don't mm. care yeah you know? mm. I'm yeah. slightly different in the sense that you know working in business and things and that does my job entails I appreciate that. You know, businesses need to make a bit of a profit yeah. to stay around. Yeah. And so I'm quite happy to support local businesses, yeah. provided I think I'm getting a fair deal. Mm. And My, I yeah. do think I'm getting a fair deal here. The hardest thing, to, the, the hardest sort of pill to swallow with the Boss Roland thing is the Katana stuff. Mm. Like, the, um, yeah. ju- even this, you know, just this week over the weekend, you know, you, you, I've spoken to different people about the Katana range. Um, you know, and until another company... Until we can get sort of passionate about the Mustangs, which I know Andrew's always been yeah. sort of the fan of, uh, until we can do that, or there's something else that sort of takes over from it, it's we've got to keep having that conversation there. Yeah, and the price point of the katana is just so good. Yeah, for mm. people, for what you're getting, because I've got the head, hundred yeah. watt head. Yeah, and you know, mm. but for example, uh, we had the katana conversation. I had a katana conversation with a customer, and I think they're online for about one eighty. Right. So you know. And it's what are we, 199? 199. 199 yeah. With, but, you know, where we've been able to um, justify that extra is that we've said, right, um, we'll um, we'll help you with it. So we'll yeah. update the software on it so that it, you've got the, the, the newest um, firmware update or whatever it is on there. Um, and we say, go home for uh, a week or two, download the software, and if... Um, you know, if you want help programming it, bring it in. And we've had countless people coming in and we sat down here with them for an hour, maybe longer, and we programmed... Sounds we, that they want. Sounds yeah. and shown them how to use it. So, which is, you know... For it's 20, added, added value, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely, so, you know, to, for... Put it this way, the there are 20, guys that sell patches online, mm. right, for the Katana and for every modelling amp that's out there. Mm. For this HX Stomp, people sell patches and things. Mm. And you can buy a typical, say, heavy metal batch of patches and it'll cost you 20 quid mm. to download you know 25 heavy metal patches already yeah. pre-done for you well i mean you know it's whole idea with these things for me is play around with them and get your own sound but a lot mm. of people want the shortcut yeah so, well you, you know with the amplifiers you know it's something that you can help provide a service you, you can provide a service with it yeah. it's when it's ds1s and tu3s and rc3s yeah. and that kind of thing that are going to be that you you really can't do anything with, and and speaking of RC threes, like that's the other that's the other big. I think katanas and loopers, that's the big issue really. Mm. 
Mm. And we're kind of, you know, it's a rock and a hard place, isn't it? You know, where we, there's no, there's no decision that doesn't have a sort of negative caveat to it. Everything's got, you know, we've either got to have that conversation with a customer where it's like, we don't do this anymore, or at least for now, mm. or we buy it in on the risk that either A, it gets better, or people are willing to compromise. Yeah. But if, you're, uh, if your customers price. know that you're not stocking a particular brand, then, you know, they won't come and try and haggle on, you know, because they, I mean, it's like me, some of these things that I've got here, you don't stock. No. So I've bought them from somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I know that yeah. you don't stock them. Yeah. You know? But if we did. If you did. But that's know. good. But, but that is good to know. Yeah. That it, yeah, that is good to know. And it, you know, it gives us it definitely gives us confidence to. But I wouldn't know. stop coming here but, uh, just because you didn't stop bo- stock boss mm. pedals or something, you know? Uh, it would be, I mean, I like the coffee too much. With, 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 <laughs> and the biscuits. <laughs> with with the, um, the comment from Hamid, though, which is, which is really valid, is that, you know, um, how many people aren't coming to us in the first place because we don't stock yeah, a particular I guess. brand? You know, I like guess. it's um, you know, like that's the same. Where do you stop? You know, there's so yeah. many different things out there. But yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's a decision for you guys. You're juggling so many balls in the air, really. That whatever you do is right or wrong, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. And, and nothing is nothing is little in terms of no. commitment to a brand either. No. no, it's not like we can say. Oh yeah, we'll have a Gibson or two. Yeah. Just to just you'd to probably be have in. to have ten or fifteen pieces or something oh, it's, like it's, that yeah, as a minimum, nice. but, yeah. which is then a serious investment. Yeah, yeah. Same with the SP. SP is either which, eight or twelve, I think. Yeah, which you know, I'm, I'm sure Hamid would know coming from you know, yeah. like a, yeah. a, a yeah, music yeah, yeah. shop. You know, uh, maybe you know it's changed in in this time. You know, because the, the music you mentioned dis, um, disappear a good you know ten, twelve years ago. Yeah. So I think um, you know I don't know whether. You could the dealerships are a little bit more relaxed then, but you know the the reason why this um, situation has come up with us is that uh, um, every year we got to renew our dealership and yeah. we got to have um, we got to tick all the boxes with regards to what we've got in stock. And so, in order for us to carry on being able to get hold of RC threes and katanas and TU threes and all the rest of it, we need to make a considerable order to yeah. bump up the rest of the the stock just to tick boxes of which the stuff we got to buy in we're not gonna yeah. earn anything from no. if if i could say do you know what out of all this if i've got to get in 20 pedals and i can make seven of them tu 3s seven of them rc3s and then six of them yeah, just, yeah. rc20s <laughs> yeah oh, oh, uh, i'd i'd do that because they would sell yeah. but no you know it's got to be yeah, you have to different ones and yeah. um you know, you really have got to jump through hoops. I've been coming here for, what, five or six years, something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. And there's probably a couple of pedals in your cabinet, boss pedals, that uh, were there when I first used to start coming Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Yeah. And when yeah. we... Yeah. Slice, and, us, slice us to left. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the thing is, you know, I think that when, um, you know, we, when, as far as I'm concerned, we haven't burned any bridges, you know, so... You no, know, no, if, no, 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 no. Um, you know, the... They're nice people there. It just seems that they can't help us for what we need at the moment. So, you know, I'm sure that there's always a conversation to be had if, um, yeah. you know, if things if things change a bit. But, yeah, thank you, Hamid. It's really... Um, yeah, it is. It is. And... Um, valid point. It's, it's good to be able to have... And it, it reopens a dilemma in my mind, you know. <laughs> but, you know... Stock it's, everything. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm going to go anywhere then. Just come it's, here. It's easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we've seen you twice this week, which is oh. strange because it's usually th- yeah, four or five Friday times, night, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a quiet week this week. <laughs> so, um, no, we're going to um, get um, Jared in to talk a little bit on here, hopefully get some video content with him as well. Yeah, And we'll be streaming everything on Facebook Live, YouTube Live and everything else that goes along with it. Um, I think um, it's going to be a good evening. It should be really good evening. I've looked at some of his like workshops on YouTube. And, yeah, um, yeah. He it's, seems it's pretty really engaging and stuff. Yeah. And I think that um, yeah, I, I think that people are going to have a, a decent night of it. But um, get here early for your car park space. I know. Well, I've got to get here early for the traffic on a Friday, haven't I? Yeah, yeah. Coming yeah. through the yeah, tunnels. <laughs> so, um, brilliant, Elwin. Thank you very much for 
coming in. Thank it's you been, very um, much, guys. It's been a, a pleasure for you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, uh, it's been good fun. Yeah, no, absolutely. And we'll. And um, I know the load. Know the load on on what goes on behind the scenes, folks. <laughs> so you know, with Adam's gearish shirts. <laughs> and, yeah. So um, I've been Andrew. I've been Adam. I've been Elwin. I've been Tom. Shut up, Tom. <laughs> Can I do a bye bye? <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely welcome to. Follow us on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, everything you can follow Spotify us on. Spotify and all the rest of it. And, um, be the stalker we want you to be. <laughs> we'll see you for episode 18 next week. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>